Good afternoon. My name is Mary Lynn Pernetta. I'm the Senior Public Education Policy Advisor at Texas 2036. Rigorous instruction like that found in high quality instructional materials is incredibly important to our state's future, so important that our founding fathers actually recognized it in the Constitution. They wrote, a general diffusion of knowledge being essential to the preservation and liberties of the rights of the people. Here in the founding document for our state, we can see a requirement that the content taught in our schools be rigorous and high quality. How do we know this? Because the very knowledge that our students receive in our public schools must be robust enough to preserve their liberty. This begs the question though, what is rigorous content and what content is rigorous enough to preserve our fundamental freedoms? In this case, rigorous content is coherent content. That means that the knowledge builds on itself over time, starting in the younger grades. For example, in order to understand the Electoral College in high school, students first need to understand the concept of elections, representatives, and then in the younger grades, who our presidents were. In another example, children can learn about Greek gods and goddesses in elementary school, then go on to read the Iliad, eventually combining this knowledge to know that the White House has columns that are influenced by classical Greek architecture. Sequences that build knowledge coherence allow students to link their knowledge to the subject all along their academic journeys. That is why the rubrics that you all are developing here today are so important. They're ensuring that every student in our state, no matter where they come from, can have access to rigorous on-grade level instruction that can propel them forward. One national study found that when students started the year behind, but they were given grade level appropriate assignments, they closed the achievement gap by seven months. Every student deserves high quality content and a rich public education that equips them to attend the college of their choice or prepares them for a career and to earn a family sustaining, family sustaining wage so that they can fully participate in our democracy. Thank you. Right, we have questions for this testifier, and I see Mr. Maynard. Hey, Mary Lynn, uh, remind us who, who, uh, who you represent. I work for Texas 2036. We're a nonpartisan think tank here in Texas. Okay, and, and, and then tell us a little bit about that. Uh, so one of the things that we do at Texas 2036 is we look at, we call it the meats and potatoes policy of our state. So those things that are going to be the building blocks to ensure that Texas is the best place to live, to work, and to raise a family by our bicentennial, which is in 2036. And who's on your board of directors? Um, there are several people on our board of directors from a variety of different cities all across the state. So I'm happy to they, see they, you. They typically represent... Uh, the community interests. We try and make sure that it's uh, regionally, uh, just different regions of the state, and then all types of interests, whether it be, um, you know, business or just community members, things like that. People that have helped run cities, all of that. Okay, and so, and so, when you're not coming up here and advocating here, what are some of the other projects that you might be working on? Uh, we also, we deal heavily in assessment and accountability, so making sure that our assessment and accountability system is fair and it's transparent and it's equitable for all children. Uh, we also deal in school finance and making sure um, that the, you know, the formulas are always working in a way that's fair and equitable, but then we also do things like community college finance and making sure that our community colleges are working in a way that improves the outcome of the average Texan and then other issues like criminal justice, water, energy, um, and health care. See all that, all, all that, all that actually gives us a little context to your testimony. So, mm -hmm. All right, so very good. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other questions from members, Mr. Kinsey? Marilyn, thank you for being with us today. Are there any specific things that you think we're getting ready to have a, a longer discussion? But are there any specific things you think we need to be thinking about um, as we're considering? where we're going with the quality rubrics and the, the HQIM 1605 implementation. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for the question. One of the things that I would encourage you all to most strongly consider gets back to the piece of data that I included in my testimony, that when a child that began the year behind was given access to a grade level instruction, they were able to close the achievement gap within seven months. One of the things that we want to focus on is making sure that every kid, no matter where they start from in this state, has access to high quality instruction that meets the approval process that you all are doing this work to construct. And we're so thankful for the work because we know it's certainly not easy. We know it's definitely going to be a labor of love over the next few months. But just again, going back to what is this content doing in terms of improving the lives and instruction for our children so that we can close our achievement or opportunity gaps and just improve student outcomes across the board. So thinking through really rigorous, content-rich resources um, that really kind of lift the bar and set a really high expectation for every child in our state. Uh, 
All right. Not seeing any other questions. Marilyn, thank you very much for being here. Thank you.